I'll share with you how this message came about um, and the backstory to it. But the thing that the Lord ministered to me was that uh, there's a book that Gloria and I wrote back a few years ago. We did two weeks of broadcast on the Believer's Voice of Victory on God is my source. And so did everybody receive this book coming in today? Did someone not receive this book? If you did not receive the book, ushers are ready. They're running right now to give you this book. And this little book, this is a compilation of two weeks of Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast um, into one little book. And it has, there are 70 scriptures in here. 70 scriptures that talk about the fact that God is your source. And there are also quotes in here, quotes from Gloria, quotes from myself, quotes from Brother Copeland. And then uh, places in here where you can write down some things that you're believing God for. Uh, and, and I just really, I had it in my heart to distribute this today in this session for you to be able to keep. You can keep this in your purse. You can keep this in your pocket. Take it with you. And you need, you need to remind yourself, God is my source. God is my source. He's the source of everything. And that's what the Lord was talking to me about concerning this session that we're having today. I think it's funny, a lot of times um, a, as a pastor, I tend to be a great reminder. I remind people of things that we've been taught, things that we've learned, things that we may have let slip to bring it back to our remembrance. And every so often something like this will come up and it will really, it'll really hit me that boy, I really need to focus on that again. I kind of lost sight of that. And so now for people who are watching online, I can't hand you the book, but I actually can. So you can go to the information to on the screen right now, kcm.org slash victory gift, or there's a URL that you can go ahead and access and you can actually get the book. Um, so you, you can follow along with this and you can have this book. We wanted to make sure that we didn't leave you out of having the opportunity uh, to, to get this book. And it was such a joy on this particular series that Gloria and I did together. It was such a joy. I mean, all of the tapings that we've done together are a joy. She's funny. I'm the straight man. She's the funny one. And, but she also carries a lot of weight where revelation is concerned. And so I wanted you to have this uh, because that's the topic that we're going to be speaking about today. And if there's, if there's somebody that comes up to you and said, what did Pastor George preach about? You're going to say, God is my source. Amen. Okay, so let's test you. What did Pastor George preach about? God is my source. Very good. Very good. Now let me give you the backstory on the, um, the, how this came to be because when I found out that Brother Jerry wasn't going to be here and that I was going to be stepping in for him, I just immediately began to pray and I said, Lord, what do you want to bring to the people? I do that all the time. I do it with church. Uh, when I'm preparing for a church service, I just ask him, what do you want to say? What do you want to tell the people? What, what is it that would please you to be told in that particular service? So I'm always looking for the unction of the Holy Spirit to be able to find that leading, to connect with that anointing, because when you, when you do what he asks you to do, it comes out a whole lot easier. There's no struggle with it. It's just there. And, so, and it comes at funny times, too. It's, it comes, something will, just like a light, exploding on the inside. This is what you need to do. This is what you need to say. And this particular one came on February 14th of 2023. That's how long ago the Lord's been talking to me about you and about this session right here. And I'll tell you how it came to be. Um, I called our local power company because we needed something done at our house. So I needed to call them and schedule an appointment for them to come. And so uh, the name of the individual that I was talking to was Angelo. Say Angelo. 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 So Angelo asked me for my home address, so I gave him my home address, and uh, we talked a little bit, and then Angelo, and this is exactly how it went, Angelo, I'm looking at your house online right now. Wow, it makes me feel poor. <laughs> oh. 
what do you do for a living? <laughs> Pastor George, I pastor a church. Angelo, well, I'm on board. <laughs> so we continued, we continued to talk about the business of the moment, all, but all the time that we're talking about the business, my, my mind and my heart is going, okay, what are we going to say next? What's going what's to happen with him next? And so what I did it, towards the end of the call, I read to him Philippians 4.19. Oh, yeah. And then I said, it doesn't matter what you do. Just trust God and believe his word. And then I said, God is your source. And immediately at that moment, the Lord said, that's what you need to preach in Sacramento. God is your source. So let's say this several times. God is my source. Ready? God is my source. Say it again. God is my source. Say it one more time. God is my source. Now I'm, I'm wanting to minister this to you, but also particularly to pastors and ministers that are here or pastors and ministers that are, are watching. Because there are so many projects, so many things to do in any church or any ministry, believing God for whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, and, and we well know that you really have to trust him for the things that need to be done and the things that need to happen. And so raise, uh, by raising hands, how many five-fold ministers do I have in here again? Five-fold ministers? Great. Very good. You're the you're a target audience here today. Um, but the rest of us too, we all have personal lives that we live. And we all have bills that we pay. And we all have issues that we face. And some of us may have uh, debt that we want to get rid of. And so this is what the Lord really had me focus on. And that really is, and it's, it seems like it's an easy thing just to say, God is my source. But we have to truly renew our minds to that fact. Because there is something that I call the vicious cycle. Do you want to hear what the vicious cycle is? Not very interested, huh? I don't blame you. But there is a vicious cycle. Um, and it goes like this. Okay, so people who are facing uh, financial challenges. And so they approach their problem from a purely natural standpoint. Instead of going to the word, instead of going to their heart, they go to their head. And they start to begin to figure it out. And that's dangerous. That's dangerous for any individual to do. That's dangerous for those of us who are in ministry to do, to try to figure out how to do it. And so what the vicious cycle is, they look at their paycheck, then they look at their need, and they go, can't do it, impossible. Then they look at their paycheck again, and then they look at their need, still impossible. And the more they do that, and the more they talk Husbands and wives, the more we talk with each other about that and about that, there's, there's a, a spiraling that takes place in a conversation. The more you talk about the fact that we can't afford that and we can't do that and how's that going to, how's it going to happen? What's going to take place? That, that is not, per, that is a, a futile attempt. It's not going to produce. It is a, I call it an exercise in futility. And that leads down another path to futile questions that you ask, such as, how are we ever going to pay for this? Where is the money going to come from? What are we going to do? Then comes the bright idea stage of the vicious cycle. The bright idea stage is, what family member can loan us the money? Where can I get another job? Have we maxed out our, crisp, our, our, our credit cards? Maybe we should get a bank loan. And I wrote down in my notes here, the madness must stop. This madness must, this madness must stop. <laughs> because it's a vicious cycle that produces nothing except more of nothing. And so it has to stop. We have to get our eyes off of the natural impossibility. And we have to get our eyes on the ultimate source. Yes. Yes, sir. 
the ultimate source. The ultimate source, and I wrote down here uh, the definition of source, and it is the point of origin. Where does it come from? Where does it come from? And so, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 8. As you're turning there, say, God is my source. source. Say it again. He is my source. He is the source of whatever we need at Kenneth Copeland Ministries, Eagle Mountain International Church, Kenneth Copeland Bible College, the Victory Channel, Kenneth Copeland Ministries Global, in everything that we're doing, every place that we're going. He is our source. We look to Him. And even, excuse me, even in a ministry, you, you start thinking about how to do it. Coming up with ideas. And what you're doing is you're, you're slowly crossing over into manipulation. And that's a dangerous thing. I remember one time many years ago, we were, we were building the executive building at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. That's over 30 years old now. 35, 36 years old. Well, we're building the building and we had to stop building it because the money ran out. Brother Copeland told them, sweep up the place and just back away, tell the workers to go home. We'll come back to it when we have the money for it. So um, at that time, I was over the publications department, the art department, and we had an agency that worked for us that was buying time on television, and they were doing other things. They were doing some advertising and so forth. And one day, uh, they gave my boss, who back then, he was the CEO, they gave him a letter. And it was a letter that they wrote. It was an appeal letter. And he gave it to my boss, and then my boss called me up to his office, and he took the letter. It's this, I read the letter. And it's like, we need to finish this building. We need money. And I'm like, this is not going to fly. And my boss looked at me and said, I want you to take it to Kenneth. And I looked at him. I said, this is my boss. I said, I'm not going to do that. He said, George. I said, okay, I'll take it to him. So I took the letter over to Brother Copeland's house. We're sitting at the kitchen table. And I tell him that our agency wrote a letter about the building and the need to finish the building. And so I took the letter and I just slowly slid it over to him. (laughs) Then I got down under the table. (laughs) And he picked up the letter and he's reading it like this. And he put down the letter. Have you ever seen those Kenneth Copeland eyes? It was as if I were the spirit of compromise himself. He looked at me. He pointed that finger at me. And he said, don't seek ways to get the money in. Seek ways to get the word out and the money will come in. Wow. First time I ever heard that. So good. So I took that letter. And I brought it back to my boss. And I took the letter and I slid it over to him. And I went, don't seek ways to get the money in. Seek ways to get the word out. And the money will come in. The Lord will work with us. The Holy Spirit will help us. But we have to, we have to be able to gauge to when we're getting off in that place where we're like, the Babylonian system where you're trying to do it yourself. You're trying to make it happen yourself. And I remember when Terry and I, we were, we were believing God for a home and the finance to, finances to be able to buy that home. And we, the Lord ministered, actually the Lord ministered to her one day and she said, this is many years ago, this is, oh, Wow, 1980, I can tell you exactly when it is, but it was way back when. And so we're in this house. Um, And so Terry and I were sitting down one day and we were talking and she said, George, what would you think about us giving our house away? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) 
What would you think about sewing our house? Hello? <laughs> sewing our house. And two years later, I answered her. <laughs> we were actually, hello? <laughs> Who is it? Who was that? A, a job that God bless. Well, get on the phone. Okay. Well, that's good. Whoop. Dropping stuff. Anyway, so where was I? Oh, two years later. I had to pray about that. I really had to seek out the Lord about that. And it was in 1990 that we were in Birmingham, England, for the convention there. Had been there all through that week. And we got on the plane to come home as we were taxiing down the runway, just about ready to take off. I looked, in Terry, I looked at Terry and I said, now is the time to sew our home. That's two years, two years to get there. And so what we did was we paid off the house. We cleaned up the house. We painted the house. We sewed the house. Did I have another house? No, we didn't. But that's the way the Lord was leading us and guiding us and directing us. And he, he helped us out with that. But all during that time, the Lord had to help me renew my mind to be able to see him provide for us. So I went into a, a personal total immersion program. Total immersion. And what I did, I listened to two particular series at that time. One was The Laws of Prosperity by Brother Copeland. The second one was Leroy Thompson's Money Cometh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. There must have been 15, 16, that back then, cassettes. You had to lug that thing around with you. It's not like having it on a phone. You just had to take that thing with you. And I listened to it all the time. All the time. And I also researched the Word of God in every, every kind of provision that you could think of. Every scripture. And that's where, that's where a lot of these scriptures came from in the book. Seventy scriptures of how God provides and how He supplies. What was I doing? I was having to renew my mind to the fact that He will take care of us. And that He is our source. And that even to this day, I still say it. I still declare it because we have a lot of projects going on at Kenneth Copeland Ministries. We had a, a freeze, uh, ice storm several years ago that knocked out half of that executive building. And so what we're having to do is rebuild the building. And then we've got Victory Studios that we're building and other things that need to be built. Now the church is needing to be big, big, bigger. But there is, there is no limit to God. And so we have to get to the place where we get out of our, our, our natural thinking about how can I do it and look to him to see how he does it. That's what we have to do. And the number one place to start is with God is my source. And so he, one of the scriptures that he gave me was this in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6. And I'll read it from the King James, but then I'll read it from the Amplified Classic. <clears throat> it says in King James, But to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom, are all, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom are all things, and we by him. That's a lot of words there. I, I need a little bit of clarification on that one. And so in, in verse 6 of the Amplified, basically it says this, Yet for us there is only one God, the Father, who is the source of all things. Yes. There's your scripture right there. God the Father, who is the source of all things. If you read it from the message translation, I just I found this just a little while ago. Um, it says there, everything comes from him. Yeah. Everything. everything, say it, everything, everything comes from him. Why? Because he is the source of all things. He's the source of all things. 
even sitting back here during the lunch hour. I just started looking up some scriptures and I found this one. I wrote it in my notes. Romans 11:36 from the Amplified. Romans, I'm looking at our person. There we go. Romans 11:36. You got it? You ready? Good to go? Okay. Uh, we work together with each other. Um, it says, and I'll read a portion of it, from, for from him and through him and to him are all things. For all things originate with him and come from him. All things live through him. But that really, that really got me when it said, for all things originate, originate with him and they come from him. He's the source of all things. And we don't, in the time that we have today, we don't, we don't have time. I mean, I found in some of my research that I've done, I, I found these pages that have nothing but scriptures on them that talk about God being our supernatural provider. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's amazing what, <clears throat> I mean, Leviticus 26.10, you don't have to put those up there. I'll just read through this. But Leviticus 26.10, the New Living Translation, you will have a surplus of crops that you'll need to get rid of the leftovers from the previous year to make room for the new harvest. You've, you've got to develop a, a renewing of your mind to this prosperous life. And get out of any kind of poverty mentality that you were either raised with, was taught, or you even think we need to get rid of it because we have the blessing of Abraham and the inheritance is ours. Yes, it's ours. Yes, you cannot afford to think any other way. You've got to change your thinking. You've got, you've got to get to the place where you wake up in the morning and the first thing you say is, God is my source. Yes, or you wake up in the night and the nighttime is when the devil tries to attack. Yeah. That's when he tries to attack the mind. When I, I was executive director the first time, from 1998 until 1995, 1993, I became pastor of Eagle Mountain Church. So I was doing both jobs at the same time. And then, and then Kenneth's son, John, took over in 1995. He was doing that. I was doing the church. But those, the first time I did this job, I lost a lot of sleep. I did a lot of worry. I did a lot of ringing. And that was not faith at all. I was not walking in faith. I was endeavoring to. But it just seemed like the, just the, the insurmountable things that seemed to try to come up. And I, I, would, I would lay awake at night. And instead of thinking, God is my source. God, you are my source. You are my source. My mind would just go in all kinds of directions. When Brother Copeland was talking last night about the $6 million deficit, I was there. I was the executive director. I was, I was under such pressure that we would go to Massachusetts to visit my parents during the Christmas time season. And I remember that particular Christmas, I said to myself, I'm not going back. I'm not going back. It was so nice in New England. The snow was on the ground. The Christmas decorations were up. And I just didn't want to go back, but I knew I had to go back. And I knew, and plus the fact, by the time we got to December, like I said, I was gathering the staff every single day. And we were praising God that we were out of that deficit. And so we continued on into that, into the next year, and just stood and believed and would not let go and had bulldog faith. <clears throat> bulldog faith. We are out of this deficit in Jesus' name. And like I told you when I shared about the fact that it was, <clears throat> they told us that it was going to be a year, year and a half, two years or more to get out of that. It was six months. Supernaturally, money started coming in. Money cometh to me now. Some of you are looking at me like, what did he just do? <clears throat> well, you, did, you didn't listen to Leroy. What he had to say about that. Leroy used to say, you need to pull the lever. You got to pull the lever, the lever. You need to pull, pull the lever. Money cometh to me now. Money cometh to me now. Money cometh to me now. 
Some of you did not do that. Some of you did not do that. It's okay. I might do it again. I might let you in on it. But we were, we were standing in faith for dear life and believing God. Not desperate, but determined. There is a determination when it comes to believing God because voices will talk to you. People will say things to you. The situation will talk to you. Your bank account, what's left of it, will talk to you. So you have to renew your mind to the fact that He is the source. And I'm saying whatever you need right now, whatever you need right now, God is your source. The originator of what you need. Through Him, to Him, are all things. For all things originate with Him and they come from Him. Pour it on, Lord. Pour it on. So we... So we... Get excited up here. <clears throat> so we got out of that deficit. And so that first time around, it was, it was difficult. It was a difficult time. Second time around, I made a quality decision. I'm not losing sleep. I'm going to have a good time. And we've seen tremendous things happen with the ministry. We've seen how God has moved. And you know, you can become skillful in the word of righteousness. As you can become skillful in whatever it is you have an interest in, whatever you do as a job, whatever it is from, from playing an instrument to sports, people can get good at it. You know, you can get good at faith. You can go from faith to faith to faith to faith. And you can develop in your faith to such a degree that things that used to bother you yesterday don't bother you anymore. Whether it's financial challenges or whatever it is. And so as I've developed my own faith over the years, my own personal faith over the years, there's a boldness because there, my, my, the spirit man is getting stronger. The strong spirit of a man will sustain him in bodily pain and injury. But a weak and broken spirit, who can bear? So the more you develop your spirit, and you do that basically by doing what we're doing right now, you just, you just immerse in the Word of God. Total immersion. Whatever it is that you're facing right now, you have to be in a place of, of a total commitment to overcome it and be disciplined about it, and don't allow the devil any room in. You listen to the Word as much as you can. You feed on it, and let it build the spirit man on the inside. And you get to the place where you will wake up in the night, and that thing will try to talk to you, and you'll say, ah, uh-uh. God is my source. God, shut up, devil. God is my source. I wrote down a couple of scriptures here. Th these are so good. There's so many of them. Psalm 23, 1, amplified. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. I don't lack. I do not lack. Say, I do not lack. Say this after me. The Lord is my shepherd to feed, guide, and shield me. I shall not lack. It says in 2 Peter 1.3, this is the New Living Translation, 2 Peter 1.3, by His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. Everything. He's given us everything. And again, it doesn't matter where you are right now. We're talking about where you're going to be. We're talking about where you are according to God, according to His Word. And it's, it is a walk of faith. It's a walk of faith that you do daily. You build it daily. Just like training in the gym. You do it daily. And you build those muscles. Well, you do the same thing with your faith. You walk that out every single day. So, <clears throat> by His divine power, God... Say this after me. By His divine power... <clears throat> God has given me, has given me everything, everything, everything I need, everything I need for, living a godly life. for living a godly life. 
I can remember years ago, I was, I was for a little while chairman of the board of Oral Roberts University. It's, it's, it's a long story about how that happened. That all I wanted to do, my daughter was going to school there. And as any good dad would do, he wants to help the school. I like to help the school. So it started with being, it started with beginning a, a minister's alliance for them. And then they had me on the board. And then I was the vice chairman and then the chairman of the board. And I can remember times, and there were, the university had been around for a long time and there's a lot of repair to be had. And they were short of money. It seemed like they were always short of money. And I thought, you know, I can help them with this. And I remember one day, <clears throat> we, were in a, we were in a dining area, and the carpet was frayed. It was just terribly frayed. And one of the vice presidents was saying, look at that carpet. Look, just look at it. We don't have enough money to buy carpet. And so I did a demonstration with them. I said, this is what you do by faith. Carpet, I speak to you in the name of Jesus. I command you to be replaced. And they're looking at me like. <clears throat> and we just spoke the word over the carpet to believe God. And so when I became the chairman of the board of, of regents, the, the at that time was, was in debt quite a bit. And so I declared we're going to be debt free. We're going to be debt free. Well, I was only chairman, I guess it was six months or so. And then uh, the, the Green family came in. I don't know if you remember all of that, but the Hobby Lobby people, they came in. Anyway, it was a good thing. I, I needed to come back home. My schedule was do church on Sunday, leave Sunday afternoon, be up there all week, come home Friday, study Saturday, do Sunday church, go back. Okay, that needed to stop. <clears throat> but anyway, we got, we got the successful transition and so they, they took over, they were working on it. And I remember the day I got word that Oral Roberts University was debt free. And I believe they still are. Well, I'm not taking credit for that, but somebody's got to speak up in faith. And your jurisdiction is your own house, your own life, your own ministry, your own business. You the boss. And so you are the prophet of your own life. Amen. Prophesy. Yes. Prophesy over it. Yes. Prophesy over that debt that's trying to loom. Debt, I command you to leave in the name of Jesus. Yes. And God will either remove it, reduce it, or pay for it. Yes. And we did this with the last house that we're in right now. It's an amazing story of how we got into the house, how we renovated the house, and how that house is debt-free. And even to this day, I, we've been there for, for many years now, and I'll walk through on a Saturday. I'm preparing for church on Sunday, and I'm walking through the hallways just praying in the Spirit, saying, thank you, Lord, for a debt-free house. Thank you, Lord, for a debt-free house. You need to practice that and you need to do that. If you're wanting to get out of debt, you need to make a quality decision to live debt free. Because I remember when we were in debt and I'm getting counseled by Brother Copeland. And he said to me one day, he said, George, when you make the quality decision to live debt free, God sees you debt free. So I made the quality decision, even though we, we were not even near close to that debt freedom. I put the stake in the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And I said, in Jesus name, we are debt free. Yeah. Yeah. And so then we began the process of walking. We walked it out by faith until the day that the last part of that debt was paid in full. And you better know there was a celebration around our house. We were waving flags. We had fireworks. I mean, it was really something. Not really fireworks, but it was going off on the inside of me. But you have to make that declaration. Say this after me. I make, I make a, quality a quality decision to live debt free. God sees me debt free. I believe it. I receive it. I take it now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How refreshing it was and it is to not pay that monthly mortgage. 
It's done. It's over. It's out. And as Gloria, as Gloria would share with me on the broadcast, we would talk about this. And she'd say to me, she'd say, George, what would it be like if you were still in debt? If you still owed the bank? How many years? How many more years? But we were, ter the Lord gave us a plan. He'll give you a plan. There's a plan. There is a supernatural plan for every one of us, for every situation that we're facing. There is a plan from God of how to walk it out. And it's an amazing plan. It is a glorious plan. I was doing things on my own. I, I was literally shoveling money up against that, that debt. But the Lord was providing. He was supplying. And when I had it on the inside, that I know that it's coming from Him. And I know, I know that He's either going to remove that debt or He'll pay it off or somebody else will pay it. But it's done. It's over. You, you need, one of the things that Terry and I have done, <clears throat> especially when we face certain things, we've been doing this for the last couple of years. We will say to the devil, devil, it's over. It's over. This is over. This is over. And I have seen the faithfulness of God through these years, the last couple of years, especially when we've been declaring it's over. It's over. This family situation, this other situation, this thing going on, it's over. And I'm seeing, I'm seeing things even to this day. I'm seeing, hey, it's over. It's over. It's done. So he is the source. He is the source of everything that you need. He's the source of debt freedom. He's the source of <clears throat> whatever needs to happen, whether it's this church, your church, other churches, call it in. Yeah. Yeah. Call it in. I like this word from the Lord that Brother Copeland gave many years ago. <clears throat> Don't look to the government for your supply. Don't look to other people for your supply. Pastors, don't look to your congregation for your supply. Jesus is our source. The blessing of Abraham is our supply. And the word is our supply. Say, God is my source. God is my source. Say it again. God is my source. Turn to Philippians chapter 4. I'm just giving you some scriptures that the Lord gave to me that solidifies the fact He is the source. He is the origin. Look to Him. And he'll show you what to do. Stop trying to figure it out. Start praying in the Holy Ghost. I've learned to do that over the years. We're facing something, whether it's at the ministry, facing something in our home, facing something in our family. And I have learned to walk and pray in the Holy Ghost. And believe God for the interpretation. Let Him interpret back to me what the answer is, um, and he, he's given it to us. I mean, it's amazing how they show up. It's amazing. And the great thing about it is the more you do this, the more you see the faithfulness of God. He's never let us down. He'll never let you down. And he'll get you through. <clears throat> Philippians 4.19. Of course, we know this scripture, but don't, don't inoculate yourself against the, truth, the new truth that God may want to bring to you about a scripture that you've read over and over and over again. Don't do it. The word of God is multifaceted. There are so many sides to this one scripture here that the more you grow in him, the greater revelation you'll have. But my God shall supply all your need according to his Riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The glory of God is the presence of God, heavy with everything good. His riches in glory. I like what the Amplified Bible says, and my God will liberally supply, fill to the full your every need according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Fill to the full, liberally supply. Say, I believe that. I believe it. <clears throat> the situation may look impossible in the natural, but according to the word, it's not. 
It's not. <clears throat> the Bible in basic English. And my God will give you all you have need of from the wealth of his glory in Christ Jesus. He will give you all that you have need of. The message translation, you can be sure that God will take care of everything you need. I'm telling you, he'll do it. He'll do it. The Rick Renner translation. I so enjoy. Are you familiar with the Rick Renner translation of this script? This is amazing. And you may want to take your phones out and take a picture. It's so good. It'll pose for you. It's wonderful. But my God will supply your needs so completely that he... You want to read it with me? Okay. But my God will supply your needs so completely that he will eliminate all your deficiencies. He will meet all your physical and tangible needs until you are so full you have no more capacity to hold anything else. He will supply all your needs until you are totally filled, packed full, and overflowing to the point of bursting at the seams and spilling over. Praise God! <clears throat> Glory to God! What a marvelous scripture that is. Shout that at the face of impossibility. Shout that at the pile-up technique. That's a strategy of the devil. The pile-up technique. He'll throw stuff, try to throw stuff on top of, of you, cover you up to where you look at it and just shake your head and go, this is crazy. This is just crazy. This is crazy. I don't let him do that to me anymore. They don't pile up on me anymore. Because I know who I am. I know who I serve and I have an inheritance in Christ Jesus and he supplies my need according to his riches in glory. Amen. And it doesn't, it doesn't matter how looming or how big it is. Our God is bigger than that. Your God is bigger than that. And the Holy Spirit will help you. He is your helper. He is your counselor. He is your standby. He is the one who is called alongside to help. But we've got this over here and this over here and this over here and that over there. Well, gather all that up in one room. Have a meeting. Take the word. Just have them sit down. All of them. All the looming things. All the loomers. <clears throat> and just start talking to them one by one. I speak to you in the name of Jesus. My God meets all of my needs according to his riches and glory. I call you done. I call you finished in Jesus' name. No, you're not going to do that anymore. You, you're paid for. You're paid for. You're paid for. You get out of the house. <clears throat> Everything begins with words. That is God's method of operation. Light be, light was. That's our method of operation. The words that we speak do not return unto us void, empty, unproductive. But they produce exactly what they are sent to do. You can talk to your body. You can talk to your body. And act like you mean it. And I'm not saying acting like an actor. I'm talking like acting like faith. Amen. Talk to your body. Amen. Speak to your body. Amen. I work out in the gym. I train. And I've had, I've had some elbow, little elbow issues. Elbow, I talk to you. I'm speaking to you right now. In Jesus' name, you are healed, well, and whole, pain-free. In the name of Jesus. You, stand up. I'm talking to you. You are free. You are pain-free. I do push-ups very easily. 
So uh, there's a difference. Oh, it's good. It's good to be free. It's good to be free. God said to subdue the earth. Our bodies are made of earth. To subdue means if it gets out of line, put it back. So talk to your body. You tell it what it's supposed to do. Instead of, instead of going through the night, not being able to sleep, having weird dreams, thinking about work, talk to your body. Body, you sleep through the night. No stupid dreams. Only glory dreams. Only dreams from heaven. That's all I'll take is dreams from heaven. I must say, I am a sound sleeper. I hit the pillow. Out. <laughs> and if I wake up in the night, it's a joyful thing. Why? Because God is my source. God is our source. Where am I here? I've been wondering. <clears throat> James chapter, chapter 1. James chapter 1. Are you still with me? Yes. <clears throat> Are you okay? Yes. Who's your source? God. God is my source. God. Say it again. God is my Say it again. God is my source. One more time. God is my source. Our source is Him and it's from heaven. Yes. Check this out. James 1, 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift, this is this is. King James, I'll read Amplified in a moment. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. It says in the Amplified Classic, every good gift and perfect, free, large, and full gift is from above. It comes down from the Father of all that gives light. So the international sign for receiving from heaven is this. This is an act of faith. It's also because I'm half Italian. Hey! But no, this is a receiving position. Father, I thank you for everything that it takes to provide and to supply our homes, our businesses, our churches, our ministries. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. From its coming from your riches in glory. Woo! This scripture, you don't have to turn there. Deuteronomy 28, 12. The Lord shall open unto you, this is the blessing of Abraham, unto you his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season and to bless all the work of thy hand. You shall lend to many nations and you shall not borrow. The message says God will throw open the doors of his sky vaults. Sky vaults. Sky vaults. <clears throat> the uh, CEB version, his own well-stocked storehouse. I like what Gloria Copeland said one time. Heaven always has a good economy. That is where we receive it from. It doesn't matter what is happening in the earth. We are not receiving it from the earth. We are receiving it from heaven. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the economy. Are you a tither? If you are, then the windows of heaven are opened over you. The blessing is pouring out and the devourer is rebuked. When stuff has gone wrong at our house, stuff is broken, stuff, whatever, washer, dryer, refrigerator, whatever it is, we will, we will stomp our feet. I'm a tither. Yeah. I have tither's rights. Yeah. Terry and I will shout it at each other. That's the only time we raise our voices at each other. We are tithers in Jesus' name. Satan, take your hands off our house. Talk to it. Talk to it. There's a word, say, God is my source. God is my source. Turn to somebody and say, God is your source. God is your source. This is a great word from the Lord through Brother Copeland. The Lord spoke 
to him and said through him and said, I have a great storehouse. Much more has been stored up in the storehouse of riches beyond your wildest dreams. You know, you got, there, there's, a, there's a minister that said something to me one time. He said, Pastor, we have to get to the place where we meditate on the word so much that we can't even think poor. Amen. We can't even think lack. It won't work. It won't happen. You develop that stronghold. So there are strongholds that are good and strongholds that are bad. But there's a good stronghold that when you develop the stronghold of the word on the inside, then whatever's coming at you, it, you will repel it. You will identify it right away. You will send it to its room. You'll do whatever it takes to put that thought, like Brother Copeland says, in prison. And to come to the place where, where you can see that great storehouse that God has. Much more has been stored up in the storehouse of riches beyond your wildest dream that I've laid up for you before the foundation of the world. Much more is stored up th there than what the church has ever called for. Oh. Oh. Man. There's a storehouse there. And he said, much more is stored up there than what the church has ever called for. We need to start calling for it. We need to be calling it in. The Lord said, I have not held back on the church, saith the Lord and the God of plenty. I've made it available to you. I put it in my word. I gave you promise and stood behind it with the blood, the precious blood of your Savior. But there's been a backwardness in my people about laying hold of the things that I provided for you. But I will say this. There is a people in the land. Yeah. Say, that's us. That's us. <clears throat> there is a people around the world. That's us. that's us. There is a people strong and mighty and growing much stronger and much mightier and more bold to lay hold and put their claim of faith on the things I have laid up for you. And it thrills me because it's been yours all the time. So when I read this and when I first heard this, I was convicted by it. And I said, I'm going to claim it. I'm going to, I'm going to claim it. Have you ever seen those unclaimed freight places, unclaimed furniture, unclaimed stuff? There's a lot of unclaimed. Well, claim it. Claim it by faith. Call it in. Receive it. It starts with this. <clears throat> you can't be moved. <clears throat> by what you see around you, but you move it. You move it. You move the mountain. You move the mess. You move the surroundings. You literally move. You move on the inside. I'll share this with you, and then we'll go ahead and receive our offering. But it was a number of years ago that it was during that time that we, we were sowing the house and looking for a place to live. And so there was a place that we, we went to. There was a Christmas party going on. And it was in a beautiful neighborhood. Oh, my gosh. It had a, it had a, a, a gate and a guard. You had to check in at the gate. We drove in. And I'm like, Gomer Pyle. Okay, well, just hold on a second. Does anybody not know Gomer Pyle? Okay. Google him. <laughs> but there's something that Gomer Pyle would say when he would be amazed. And he would say, Golly! Golly! <laughs> well, I was doing a Gomer Pyle driving through that neighborhood. Go, Golly! Look at these houses! Wow! So we, we went to this cul-de-sac, parked the car, went inside, had the little Christmas party, and I, I was going outside to get the car to bring it around. It was cold, and so I was going to bring it around for Terry and I, Terry to, to just walk from the front door to the car. And I walked outside, and I stood there for a moment, and I looked down the street. I said, God, 
this is so beautiful. But I said, it's too rich for my blood. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong! <laughs> well, long story short, in the very, ex a very exact spot that I was looking at, we moved into that house. It's like God was saying, I'll show you. I'll show you. And it was, it was a good 40-minute drive from the church and from school. And we were there for a few years. And then the Lord led us. We had borrowed for that house. And so we decided to sell. We found another one. And the Lord made it to where we were able to get into that house. I mean, it's just, just a magnificent story of how he provided. But with this house, he, he was saying to us, I, I want to lift your vision. Yeah. Yeah. And can you imagine me standing there that Christmas, looking down the street, looking, looking at the house that I was going to live in and telling the Lord, that's too rich for my blood. And then he put us there. He put us in that house. And so you have to lift your vision. Your vision has to come up. You need, you need to come up for air. You've been underwater for way too long. And live, living, living in that place. And it does. It takes development and cultivation. The cultivation of faith is a very specific thing. I've been here with Kenneth and Gloria since 1976. I, w I met Terry in 1975 at ORU. And she introduced me to their teaching. I started listening to it then. Changed my life completely. Then I came for the summer job, which is the longest summer job I've ever had. <clears throat> but I've watched this ministry. The building that I worked in when I first came was a little bit larger than this auditorium. That's the first place I came to. No, it wasn't on radio. It wasn't on television. And I've watched this ministry, and I've watched Kenneth and Gloria use their faith. The ministry was nine years old when I came. And so he was just traveling at that time. Then came radio. Then came weekly television. Then came daily television. Then came the big kahuna, which was the Believer's Voice of Victory Network, which became the Victory Channel. Wow. And think about that. Think about the, the decision that Brother Copeland made to not charge the broadcasters. There was a point in time where he had to make a decision about whether or not he was going to charge them. Or were we going to take on the cost of that? And the Lord spoke to him and said, no, don't charge them. The partners of Kenneth Copeland Ministries will subsidize the Victory Channel. And that's exactly what you're doing. You are supporting not just Kenneth Copeland Ministries. You are supporting 38 other ministries that are reaching the world. Imagine that. Imagine all that's taking place with all of those broadcasters. And you get credit for that. But I've seen Kenneth and Gloria develop their faith over the years, and they've been very specific about it. And I've seen, I've seen them come up and up and up and up. And Terry and I, we've been right behind them. Right behind them, working, developing, and seeing our faith work. But it all begins with those simple words, God is my source. Now, I had finished up the notes a few days ago. And I was just, I don't know what I was doing exactly, but the Lord interrupted me. He said, you hadn't thought about the offering yet. Oh, okay. What do you want to do about the offering? And this is what he let me know. He, and I want you to turn there very quickly. First Chronicles 29. First Chronicles 29. I wrote this down. <clears throat> God is my source of all I need. God is my source of all I give. He's the source of all you give. It says in 2 Corinthians 9.10... Now, he who supplies seed to the sower, or the King James Version says, ministers seed to the sower and bread for food, will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You'll be made rich in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. 
Terry and I have been working at this for a long time together. This is our 46th year of marriage. We've known each other almost 50 years. And I learned faith from her. I learned faith from her dad. I learned faith from Gloria. And this last year, 2022, we gave more personally in the history of our lives than we've ever given, ever given in our lives. And it's just keep, it just keep, keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But there's a revelation that's attached to that's very important. That not only is he the source of what you need to live, but he's the source of what you need to give. And here's the example. And I want the musicians to come on out here. Because the receiving of this offering, I had a song that was chosen and it was wild and lively and dancing. And the Lord said, no, 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 wait a minute. This is, this, is, this is too precious, this revelation that God is the source of your giving. David got the revelation. In 1 Chronicles 29, they were receiving offerings for the temple. And David gave, Mark Hankins calls it in today's terms, $1.5 billion of his own. And then he turned to the people. What will you do? Turn to the leaders. Turn to the people. What will you do? And the people gave willingly. And <clears throat> let me read this to you. In verse 6 it starts, <clears throat> Then the chief of the fathers and the princes of the tribes of Israel, the captains of the thousands and the hundreds, with the rulers of the king's work, offered willingly and gave for the service of the house of God. And then it lists out how much they gave which I wrote in my Bible, and I'm not sure if this is exact, it's running around 300 million. The total of all they gave was about 3 billion. And then in verse 9, it says, Then the people rejoiced, for they offered willingly, and because with perfect heart they offered willingly to the Lord, and David the king also rejoiced with great joy. Well, when it says perfect heart, they were consumed with the house of God. They were consumed with the house of the Lord. David, if you would. And then it goes on to say, Wherefore, David blessed the Lord before the congregation. And he said this, Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and all that is in earth is yours and I really believe that as he was saying this he was getting revelation at the moment about something perhaps something he hadn't thought of before he said for all and maybe he was saying like this for all that is in heaven, all that is in the earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted and head above all. But then in verse 12, it's like he's starting to get it. He's starting to get it. Both riches and honor come from you. You reign over all, and in your hand is power and might. And in your hand it is to make great, to give strength unto all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. And then he says this, but who am I and what is this people that we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort? And here it is. For all things come of you and of your own have we given to you. He's seeing it. He's seeing it. You need to see it. I need to see it. That everything we have comes from Him, but everything we give comes from Him as well. He says in verse 15, We're strangers before you, sojourners, as were all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow, and there is none abiding. O Lord our God, all of this store, all of this offering that we prepared to build you a house for your holy name comes from your hand and is all your own. I know also, my God, 
that you try the heart and you have pleasure in uprightness. As for me, in the uprightness of my heart, I willingly offered all these things. And now have I seen with joy the people which are present here to offer willingly unto you. And then he says in verse 19, Give unto Solomon, my son, a perfect heart to keep your commandments, your testimonies, your statutes, and to do all these things and to build the palace for which I have made provision. And in verse 20, And David said to all the congregation, Now bless the Lord your God. See, they were, they were joyful. They were rejoicing. They were jumping up and down about it. But then it's like this heavy, weighty presence of God a revelation of the fact that our offerings come from Him. It comes from Him. And to be able to release your faith and go before the Lord and say, Lord, I have a desire to give. You said you would, you would minister seed to the sower. I'm a sower. I'm a sower. If you're a sower, then you qualify. If you're a sower, and I'll tell you something about Brother Copeland, I have not seen another sower quite like him. The millions of dollars that come to Kenneth Copeland Ministries and go out of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. He's giving all the time, all the time. He was getting ready to go to the set of The Chosen. And the word came through, the edict came down, the king wants to take $100,000 with him. Okay, it shall be so. Cut the check, give it to the king. And so Kenneth took it down there to the chosen. He loves to give, he loves to give. There was a time, we were going to Jesse Duplantis' vi visionary conference. And I recommend you go to that, that's a great conference, visionary conference always builds my vision and we were there with Rick and Denise Renner having breakfast with them and they were sharing with us the fact that across the street from his house he's building a studio and he was telling us just sharing and I said how are you doing on the finances with it and he said well because of what's going on with the ruble there he said what we had is, is gone so we've had to stop I said well how much would it take to finish it he said, probably about $300,000. So I looked at Terry, she looked at me, and as CEO, I have authority, I have authority. So <clears throat> we went to the conference, Terry and I went back to the room. We said, George, what, sh what should we do about this? And so I think it was, I think the, I think he needed 200 and something thousand. What we've been learning to do in our giving, somebody needs something, go over it. Don't just meet the need, go over the need. What are we sowing for? Abundance. What are we sowing for? More than enough. What are we sowing for? Too much. So that evening when we were getting ready to go to the meeting, we met them in the lobby, sat down, explained to them what we wanted to do. And Rick and Denise were just shocked. They said, we didn't mention that for you to give it. And I said, no, no, this is what we want to do. The Lord, <clears throat> and really this is an interesting thing that the, that money came from partners. It came from the Lord to the partners. The partners gave and partners, you helped to finish Rick and Denise Renner's studio in Moscow. Yeah. I love, I love, Kenneth loves, we all love at the ministry to be used by God to sow seed. And as David realized, he's the source. He's the source. Jesse and I talk a lot. He's on the, the board of the ministry. He calls me sometimes twice a week. How you doing? How you doing? Then he starts to preach to me. And he tells me, he said, he said, ministries need to believe in the buffer. We call it a reserve. 
Some call it a storehouse. But you don't, you get to a place in your ministry and, and oftentimes, I need to wrap this up, but give me a few more minutes, okay? Just a few more. Oftentimes, people are living from paycheck to paycheck, sometimes not even paycheck to paycheck. We need to get up and over that. That's what, if anybody in this room or watching us right now, you're going from paycheck to paycheck, barely. We believe this is the end of that. God is your source. He's going to get it to you. There are some ministries that are living offering to offering. And they have nothing set aside, nothing put back. There is nothing wrong with a storehouse. God said he would bless your storehouses. Storehouses. So there's nothing wrong with a reserve. And maybe you may be in ministry. You may be struggling. Start talking to it. Start talking to it. Open up an account so you can start putting that in there. God knows our hearts. He knows we want to give. He knows we're not trying to manipulate. And I believe that's one of the reasons. This whole thing with, this whole thing with Israel and Ukrainian Jews, we have put over a million, you, 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 and you, 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 have put over a million dollars into that. Over a million dollars. That's why we're getting phone calls from the president of Israel. That's why we got a letter from Benjamin Netanyahu. Yay. Dear pastors George and Terry. Wow, you did that. Where did it come from? Father, in the name of Jesus. Come on out here, guys, if you would. We're going to prepare for the, where's my offering card? There it, is. it flew over here. We're going to prepare our offering. And this, this is a song that the team, has, again, has not done before. But I looked online, and I just, I just looked for on YouTube a song called You Are My Source. And I found it. There's a song. There's a song. And so they're going to minister the song. And what I want us to do is just, just begin to worship the Lord. We're going to worship the Lord with our giving. And there is a harvest, a massive harvest attached to every seed that you sow. The harvest of your seed will swallow up your need. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pastor Terry said that. So let me say this, and then we'll move over into that worship time. If you'd like an envelope, raise your hand. One of the ushers will bring you one if you're writing a check. KCM. And those of you who are watching or you want to do this in here, text, text to give, text event in the amount to 36609. Uh, if you're watching and you'd like to go online, it's kcm.org slash TV event. If you want to call us, uh, it is 877-281-6297. And those of you who'd like to mail it, Kenneth Culpa Ministries, Fort Worth, Texas, 76192. And as you prepare your offerings and we minister this song, <clears throat> after you finish doing what you're doing with your offering, I want us all to stand up when we, after you do that, when you're ready. And if there's anybody that wants to come down here, maybe you're facing, you've got right here a major need that's going on. And you just need to come to the altar and bring your gift. The ushers will go ahead and receive it. But if you want to bring it, to the altar and just lay it down here and just come and, and soak in this atmosphere of the glory of God and let the Lord minister to you. We'll just take a little bit more time and let the Lord minister to you as you sow this seed, knowing that it's coming from Him through you and He will multiply that seed that is sown.